Hey Internet, it's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and this is Scribes and Scrolls, the Candlekeep Mysteries. And contrary to what you just saw in the opening titles, it is not book six, The Price of Beauty. We are now on to a brand new book. If you look above Gary's head, you will see we are on book seven, Under a Red Moon, and this is chapter 65, The Grandfather Tree We Go. Um... Though it appears the book club has been, uh, has been waylaid, um, as we will find out in just a few moments when we get into the game, there's a little, uh, a little something that's, uh, crossed their paths. Um, oh, God. couple of quick announcements though, before we get into, uh, into our game. First off, a... Reminder, if you are with us watching live, you're here in the United States, go vote tomorrow. Go vote. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm waiting to see where this laughter is going to go. It's <laughs> because we're going to be a fascist Christian nationalist country in the next two years. There's nothing we can do about it. You can vote. You can vote. 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 <laughs> Ignore Ricky's pessimistic nihilism. Yeah, like my cynicism. I'm, but, just, um, I'm just going to bring marshmallows for the kindling. That's all. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, um, we're going to be all moving up with uh, M and Gary in Canada. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, so we're going to bring our welcome we're us. Bring our American politics to you. <laughs> no, I didn't. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, Wednesday. Be sure to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, sorry side I'm, chat. Side, I'm gonna, yeah, side I'm chat. Mute myself. Em has shared with us that we are not welcome. Yeah, even if you didn't put the temperature in after it, it was just like wow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Tell anyway, me. Wednesday. <laughs> tune in for the epic finale of the darkness outside of Broken Branch which has been Carrie's debut as a storyteller, as a game master of anything um, with this completely original scenario using Down Darker Trails, a little bit of Pulp Cthulhu in our Mythos Investigator series. Um, Wednesday's game will be pre-recorded, um, or rather it is pre-recorded. We already did it. We know what happens, but you don't. So tune in tomorrow night so you can check it out. Um, Wednesday. And we are wednesday sorry night. wednesday wednesday you can tune in tomorrow night you won't see anything but turn in on tune in on wednesday um on thursday there will be no dawn bringers uh because the dawn bringers has gone on hiatus until january <clears throat> um we are we are taking uh normally we would take december off anyway um but uh, we are taking a little bit of extra time to allow everybody to prepare for the end. <laughs> uh, we've announced it already um, on social media, and I think we've even mentioned it here on stream uh, a couple times. But the Dawnbringers is coming to an end. Um, and in January, we will return for the finale arc. Um, I'm going to put in the chat the Dawnbringers finale trailer. There is a link there to the final trailer voiced the vo voiceover uh, by our own Carrie. Um, but uh, please do check that out. Be sure to tune in. In its stead, since uh, there will be no Dawnbringers, I've decided at least this Thursday, uh, each Thursday something different, uh, but this Thursday, I'm going to go through 1985 Games Deck of Stories Genesis box. I'm going to create at least one scenario, maybe two or three. Um, and hopefully with the audience participation, we'll come up with some some uh, one-shot ideas or scenarios, uh, encounters. And then I'm going to write them up and uh, put them online, probably on uh, oh. Kofi for... Um, uh, for members of the, of the MTD Kofi. So, Neat. um, tune in on Thursday for that. Um, and in future Thursdays, I might do some mini painting or 
take a look at some uh incredible stuff that WizKids has sent me, some minis. It's a variety hour for the next couple months. Um also this Friday I will be over on Nerdarchy for another episode of Untraditionally Arcane, our game with Ted as our DM um and a wonderful group of players as we are playing Untraditional Wizards. Um sponsored by Easy Roller Dice Company. So come on over and check that out. Uh last thing I want to mention before we get into our game um is just a reminder as we as we talk about before every one of our games because it is super important is just a reminder that you matter. Your presence on this earth makes a difference. You don't you don't have to believe that, but it's true. Um and uh but we do want you to believe that. We understand that everybody uh has a variety of reasons that they might be struggling, any number of things that you could be dealing with. And sometimes people are, um, might be unsure where to go, uh, to get help. So we try to make it as simple as possible. Anytime you are here with us in our chat, you can type exclam exclamation point help as I have just done. And a couple URLs will pop up, find a helpline.com, or you can check out, uh, check out take this.org's growing list of resources. We encourage you to check out those websites, bookmark them, save them for yourself, save them for a friend, and remember, you matter. With that, I think it is time to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Yay! Oh, my Huzzah! word. Oh. That music just got really loud. I apologize. Oh. One second. It was a little delay, so we didn't get it. That stuff came in hot at 100%. <laughs> so, um, okay, I think we got that sorted. So, you all have, uh, well, one thing I want to mention is this is really exciting because with our most recent sessions, and sort of officially starting uh, with this session, the Candlekeep Mysteries has sort of gone off book. Uh, we are opening up the no world a little bit more. Uh, oh, pun absolutely intended. You know my intend policy. Intend your puns. You Helen. know my policy. Always intend your puns. Indeed. Um, but we are opening up the world um, and um, kind of letting more so than just following the Candlekeep Mysteries uh, source book. I'm letting the players drive the story where they want to go within the world since uh, um, there are certain things that are, are driving them and certain goals that are driving them right now. For instance, uh, after the um, after the debacle at um, at uh, the Temple of the Restful Lily, um, you have uh unfortunately you witnessed the rather sudden and gratuitous death of vorn um at the hands of one um ravona shadowheart who uh used a spell to insta kill him um and then said that she was going to put her emissary in with your group to keep an eye on you somebody who had a vested interest in determining what is happening to the souls that head into the Shadowfell that should be destined for the Raven Queen, but are some of them aren't making it. Uh, that emissary, of course, is none other than Vorn's own sister, Vornushka, um, wielder of the Blood Axe. Um, so I'm sure that'll be okay. Uh, that'll be just fine. Uh, you yeah. were able to rescue your friend mm -hmm. uh, who goes by the name Von Reed, who is the, who is now uh, the Goliath. Von Reed, who is now, sorry, who is, <laughs> he is a Goliath named Von Reed. He is now the caretaker of the Temple of the Restful Lily in the aftermath of what happened there. Um, finding yourself in the Silver Marches, uh, um, has proven a little bit beneficial due to some recent issues with Togo and Vorn in that you met Marta, who knows of, in just a very short time, less than two days now, 
uh, there is a place in the high forest called the grandfather tree that on one of the four um, key times during the year, one of them being the summer solstice coming up, um, that you can uh, talk to the tree and, and get some help. Um, and that's where you're heading uh, currently to talk to the grandfather tree. Quickly moving through the forest. Uh, and as you do so, uh, you have unfortunately... Uh, well, one of the things you learned was that you would need to, um, hold on, I need to fix these domain dice, dom domain tomes here. Sorry for interrupting, uh, except not really. Well, there was one earlier from Tomiko as well. Oh, I wanted hey! To get. So, oh boy, um, you learned that you need to bring offerings to the dryads that protect the, um, grandfather tree. Uh, you found a wonderful little clearing uh, in the forest with a fallen tree and a variety of flowers growing. Um, and as you were picking these flowers and uh, preparing them into a, a small bouquet, still needing to find something for autumn, the ground erupted beneath you, sending some of you flying... Um, as you were pushed down onto the ground and four very large uh, insect-like creatures known as onkegs have burst up out of the ground and are now <coughs> looming over top of all of you. And that's why I need you all to roll initiative. Yay, this is my first time as a barbarian getting to roll initiative with advantage. All right, we got a Didn't 17 for much. Marta. Um, I need to roll for Mizia. Mizia gets a five. <laughs> um, Tira. Yeah. What you got? Sixteen. Sorry, I put it. Oh, I <laughs> I private messaged it to Ricky. Sixteen. <laughs> Ricky knows I got a sixteen. There you go, Doc. I don't want to answer for you. Thirteen. Vornushka. Ricky and I are telling secrets. That's all right. Hold on. I gotta roll it. <laughs> I got a 17 on that one. Uh, 17. And... I need somebody to roll a D4 for me. Dibs. Three. Okay. Um, hold on. Where'd my pen go? Three. Okay. And then. That's that. And then. Okay. Here we go. At the top of the order is both Vonushka and Marda. Marda, you were not knocked prone. Uh, you quickly rolled off of Tira's back uh, but I believe Vornushka you were knocked prone um, but these four creatures have emerged with grasping uh, uh, clacking Pincers. mandibles they have uh, numerous hands and claws of different sizes as they rise up and are looming over all of you in this clearing and they're making this sort of hissing, chittering sound. Vorn and Marta, what do you do? You decide amongst the two of you uh, who will actually go first. It's okay with you. I'd like Marta to go first just because she has something that will affect. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Vornushka is going to see the posture change in Marta and understand that that means that that person wants to, like, just by body language, has something up their, up their sleeve. So Vernus is going to let Marta go first. So Marta is going to get um, as centered to the others as she can, um, as close to the others, I suppose. Um, and she's going to take her quarterstaff and slams it against the ground. Um, and you almost hear a echo of the shaking that was happening before these um, 
creatures came up and as she does so again a spark of gold erupts from the top of the staff and the area around her is bathed in light and she is going to use her channel divinity to uh, create a sphere as these um, glowing fireflies uh, encircle um, everyone, which has a 30 foot radius. It's filled with dim light and anyone who ends their turn in the sphere get 1d6 plus seven temporary hit points plus um, the, it, 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 it ends an effect of charmed or frightened. So if they Holy end their turn, crap. Yeah. Marta, Either of those. everybody. Marta, so every time you end your turn there. <laughs> Marta just kicking things off with the epic arcane or you rather divine divine From... blast of, of protective energy. You said that was 1d6 plus 7? And yeah, I, assu I assume that's, seven. that's everyone you choose in your party that's affected by that? Or... That's not going to affect um, the baddies, right? No, I I can grant the creature one of the the benefits if they end their turn. Okay, I got here. you. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Is it is that your turn then? Um. No. Um, okay. Also, um, I, I would imagine that uh, Vernushka is near. Um. Marta. Yeah, you're all fairly close. You were standing around this tree stump. So you see with like, so the top of her staff has this like fountain of light er like radiating out. And then with the bottom of her staff, she like kind of taps uh, Vernushka in the back of the leg and um, says, I have faith that uh, you'll be able to prove yourself with this <laughs> in the eyes of others. And she like... Like looks very pointedly at Tira and then back at Vernushka, and um, she's gonna cast uh, Shield of Faith, which gives you a plus two bonus to your AC. Because okay. that's what Vernushka needed was more armor class. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you'll never get Tank. hit ever. <laughs> yeah. AC Vernushka. Of 30. All right. Um. We're just going to survey the battlefield. Where are these creatures in opposition to us? All around you. Surrounding us. They literally so came up basically from underneath and around you, and they're all four of them are basically surrounding your party. Just four? <laughs> okay. Just four. Wow. <laughs> Each wow. one of these is a large creature. Yeah. Let the um, hate flow through you. Yeah, we're just gonna still <laughs> do it. Kill him. Herself <laughs> just for, um, and let's see. Let me think for just a quick moment. For them surrounding us. All right. Um, where is Tira in relation to Vanushka? As she's looking around, she's looking for Tira's. I think that. I think that uh, Tira would have gone ahead just a little bit mm -hmm. with Marta on her back. And um, when they got blasted apart, I would say, like, she's still in a range where she can, like, see you and hear you if you yell something, but not super duper close. I mean, you guys didn't get thrown backwards. You just got knocked to the ground. So you're all within, oh. like, 10 feet or so of each Ten other. 10 feet. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Vernushka. Um, grips her ex and you know like for the first time seeing like teamwork and someone enchanting her and for a moment in time um, I need no help but I shan't not to be grateful and um, is going to charge towards one of the creatures the closest creature with the blood ex um swinging at it all right a lot of disposition for a simple action here we go <laughs> oh nat 20 plus 10 let's go 30. wow can you be a vornusha forever wow i might be <laughs> <laughs> 
a nat 20 on the on the first combat roll of the game uh so vornushka of course that generally means um uh means automatic max damage so that's 19 points of damage then you roll your damage die again on top of that oh god that's 15 22 wait so well okay you see it in a group wait wait how could you get a 15 your your damage die is only a 12 a 1d12 plus 7 you don't get the plus 7 again Oh, that's what I did, but I automatically just hit it. It automatically, it applied the crit to that naturally. That's what it gave me. But I'll go with your saying. Yours is better. What did you roll <laughs> then? Uh, you rolled a eight? Is it in the log? I don't remember. Well, if you had a 15 total, it should be in there. Let me let me check. It was a five plus 10 plus seven. Oh, I see. Because it, yeah, Half it did orc. the two. So... Uh, we'll do that. We'll do that. 10, um, 27 total points of damage. Um, so just to Jake, just to, from a technical perspective. So it's all the dice maximized plus the base number and then an additional roll of the dice, right? Correct. Yes. So yes. it With- should be because Fornushka is a half work. Am I right? Orc no, she's full orc. orc. Oh, she's full orc. Okay, never mind. Well, because it says half orc in the chat. So, oopsie, sorry. She should be full orc. Oh, yeah, Ricky, we're gonna have to look at that and fix that because that changes some of your your ability stuff too. Yeah, okay. it changes a bunch of stuff. But anyways, we'll that's probably that. why I missed that. When is we were working. Doing that. Yep. Gotcha. This is when Bornushka realizes that she's got human in her, and it's a bad time. <laughs> it's what a human like you know how people say they're yes. American, but they're not. <laughs> It's like, what am I? <laughs> okay, how do you want to play this out, Jake? So you do, you do a total of twenty nine points of damage on this first attack. Wow! Wow! Okay. All right. Um, do I get a second one? So. Yeah, I'm a little. Yeah, you do. You... Well, I can hold. No, my second action. you do not get a second attack. Okay. Because you are okay, multi-classed, right. and it's where you split oh. your class. You don't get the extra attack. It's a bull cool. move, Cotton. We'll change that. So All I right. will ask you this, just because I know you're playing a multi-class, and yeah. um, you are trying some new things. Do you rage at any point yet? Because you can do that um, as a bonus action. Not yet. No okay. Rage yet. So you just jump up and just do a massive amount of damage to this creature. And actually, because it's a crit, um, oh, I hate when I click the wrong icon. I just accidentally opened Photoshop. Um, roll me a d12 real quick. That is going to be an eight. Okay. Wow. So now I need you to. Hold on. I, my whole screen just went to Photoshop. <laughs> you didn't want to edit some photos real quick? And it's loading weird. And I, I, I'm afraid it's screwing the stream up. Close. Uh, okay. <coughs> looks good so far. Okay. So I need you to <laughs> roll a d20. Because you did a crit, you can you deal a brutal wound to this. Uh, it's going to be an eleven. So that is a um, an eleven uh, is going to be they raise up one of their uh this onkeg raises up one of their limbs um to uh to try to block your axe as it comes in 
and your axe just severs through the chitin and meat of this, shattering parts of this chitinous shell. And uh, they are going to lose one to their armor class because wow. of that. Um, yes. From that brutal wound. Uh, which we then are going to move on to Tira in the initiative okay. order. Tira would like to rage immediately. Um, and I charge to uh, one that Vornushka is not attacking. Perfect. And I want to hit it with my sword. Here I go. That's a 17 to hit. That is going to hit. Yay! Okay. Here I go. Attacking. Ooh. Oh. -ho. Okay. Uh that is 13 points of damage plus two for my rage. So 15 points of normal damage. And five additional points of full damage. So 20 total damage to this. Yes. And because I'm not a multi-class bitch, I'm going to attack again. Here I go. That was directed at Vornushka, not you, Ricky. Here we go. <laughs> Hilarious. That's another 17 to hit. All right. Huzzah. All righty. Uh, that is six plus four is 10 points of normal damage plus two for raging. So 12 points of normal damage and an additional three points of cold damage. So that's 15 total. As you come in swinging with this frost great sword, <clears throat> mm -hmm. slicing into this thing, you're ripping into the soft parts between the chitin, and at the as you're slashing it, you see these arcs of blood that instantly freeze, and you cool. you hear you even hear the splashing as it goes off into this babbling brook nearby, as arcs of blood turn to ice. Um, and spray across, uh, and you even hear a little bit of a hissing um, as they seem to have an acidic component uh, to Ooh. them, if not in their blood, at least to themselves. Um, anything else? I, I believe you've used both actions and your bonus action. I have. I'm done. I would. I would sneer and, and grimace. Doc. Yes. What would you like to do? Uh, okay. Um, probably nothing useful. Um, <laughs> are there? No, no, that's that's a stupid idea. <clears throat> Mother trucker. Okay. Um, Doc is gonna wa walk up to the ankeg that is beside Vornushka um, and uh, is going to attempt a quick leg sweep and try and uh, use the shove action. I'm just sp clarifying the shove action uh, to push this creature over. Gary, Gary I believe you're the first person to ever use a shove ever. action. I think. Yes, that's true. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so may I have an opposed athletics check, please? <laughs> there was no salt at all in that description. Oh, there's a lot of salt. Uh, uh, athletics, you say? Yes. Not a sodium. That is going to be... Wait. A 17 uh... on athletics. Okay, hang on. Uh... Why does that so always default this... to self? I want you to be able to see my rules. I got a new feature. Um, no. um I can add in 5e is fun. I can add plus four as a reaction. Um, so I would like to do that. Nice. So I got I got 19. Excellent. As I as Doc uh Doc is he, he's picturing a moment in his mind. There's a candle 
uh, flickering at the at the very edges of his vision, uh, and he's writing hurriedly. He can't. the The recollection doesn't allow him to see what he's writing, but the pen uh, dive uh, is almost uh, cutting through the paper like a sword. Um, and I got nineteen. You are such a mysterious bastard. I am so really excited for a big. Review. What does this look like as Doc? Manages to foot sweep to leg sweep something that has four legs on the ground. <laughs> um, it's almost like Doc is a blur. Nobody can sort of tell where he is or what he's doing. It's like he's he kicks out the knee of one leg and then he punches the knee of the other leg and then he kicks the back of the ankle of one leg. He's just like a whirling dervish of the shove action. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so, um, and then there um, is a tremendous just sort of jumbled yeah. crash and you feel all of you can feel this the weight of this thing as it strikes into the ground just <laughs> and is now prone um and so what else are you going to do uh doc is going to look over at, at vornushka and it's say there you go i'm a helper you look like you could use it vornushka um, we'll definitely smirk and be like, all are welcome on the battlefield. And yeah, I mean, it's my turn. I'll, I'll take my turn. That doesn't make any sense. Was why would you welcome enemies on the battlefield? It's ridiculous. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Incredible. Stunning as always. <laughs> as that one drops. Um, Mizya is going to. Oh, they changed their spell loadout, so they don't have the spell I thought they did. Um, but they do have. <laughs> Ricky. Okay. Uh, Mizia is going to do a classic Mizia move um, and is going to toll the dead. As you hear this, Mizia sort of step aside and you see this sort of spectral quill form in the air. And then you hear this doom sound of a bell ringing. Nice. Uh, Mizia oh, is good. going to toll the dead on uh, the one that Tira had already been attacking um so for told the dead i think it needs to make a wisdom saving throw so that will be is it rolls that is an 11 uh which is going to fail mizia gets 1d12 because nice. it's taken damage already um as Mizia does this, it makes this motion, and you hear this bell ring out. You see Tira, the one that you're engaged with. Mm -hmm. You see, you hear this bell sort of, dong, and the frequency seems to resonate through to the, the frequency of this Ankag. As you see it start to vibrate, and you watch fissures going all across the chitin of this creature as its shell starts to fall away and you see it just slump before you. It doesn't even fall completely to the ground because of its four legs and, and everything. It just sort of just Wow. As Mizia has killed one of the Ankegs. Dwight does so great when he's not here. <laughs> right? Great job somewhere, Dwight. <clears throat> uh, Incredible. So that's Mizia. It is now the Ankegs' turns. Um, evens is Vernushka, odds is Doc. So Vernushka, um, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as this prone Ankeg, its mandibles open, and you just see a blast of acidic, uh, well, not acidic, you see a blast of acid. Uh, as it shoots bile out of its mouth at you. That'll be a deck saving throw, an 11. 
Uh, unfortunately, you don't move fast enough, and this acid just blasts into the side of your face and shoulders. Uh, Varnushka, you will take 10 points of acid damage. Also, I want to back up a little bit. Uh, because at this point, everybody in your party has finished their turn in your zone there, Marta. Mm -hmm. So I'm realizing we need to back up and sort of resolve that. It's your choice what they get. Yeah, oh. so every every person that ends their turn there can have 1d6 plus 7 temporary hit points. So Amazing. all of you roll 1d6, add 7 to it. You have that many mm -hmm. temp HP from Marta's effect. Incredible. I rolled a one for Mizia. Natural six. So that's as 13 temp HP. 13 temp HP for me as well. So is that 13 plus the max or is that 13 plus? No, the you, there's a temp HP slot. Just type in 13 there? Yeah. Yep. Yes. D&D &D rules. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> um. So that's that one's turn. Uh, this one is dead. Uh, the other two that are in the area um, are going to make charges at one is going for you, Doc. Because um, you're a blur. And the second one trickiness. is going for one, two, three, Tira. Oh. Um, as they come charging in, Doc, uh, one of them comes at you Attempting to bite you with its mandibles. Uh, that is going to be... Oh! As it comes into you, uh, into your area, um, it sort of slides on the loose dirt and stumbles over the fallen log, biting into the air above your head. It rolled a critical fail, which means if you would like, you can take an opportunity attack oh. against it. Destroy it. Yes, I will take an opportunity attack. And I will <coughs> shove it. Congratulations! I think you're the first person to ever use shove in a game. Yeah, the first time too. Like this. Yeah, is, first know, time ever. I don't remember. Yeah. The, that yeah, is a sixteen. Time. I got a nineteen. Once again, Doc, you knock over another one of these large creatures. <clears throat> taking... This time, uh, this time, uh, the ank egg is charging him. Uh, it stumbles forward. And Doc just holds out his hand and then says, no. And it falls over. Incredible. Awesome. Um, really there's the one going for you, Tira, that is okay. going to uh, attempt to bite you with its mandibles. It's not a critical fail, but it's a two instead of a one. So that's ah. a uh, seven as it, as it comes in and attempts to strike you. I would like all of you to make uh, perception or insight checks. Um, except Vornushka, reminder, yours is at disadvantage because of your um, exhaustion. I got a six. Okay. I'm raging. Seven... Seven and ten for Vanushka. Seven for Mizya. Out of twenty-two. Doc, what'd you get? Sorry, what did I have to roll? It's a uh, insight or perception check. Fifteen. Doc and Marta, uh, you notice in this fray that as you all started charging in on these onkegs. Um, they as they had popped up, they hadn't taken really any sort of hostile action towards you. Um, you also yeah. notice that the other two uh, that are attacking are reacting uh, almost apprehensively. Uh, the way in which they're attacking is is uh, very defensive, like they're lunging forward. Um but their body language is such that it's almost like they're snapping and pulling back. Um, and Marta with a 22, you will notice in particular because of the one 
uh, well, the two that lie prone near your feet, one dead, uh, one prone. Um, oh, wait. Sorry. That's a separate one. Uh, so there's two prone ones and, and a dead one. Uh, you can just make out that around their uh, parts of their upper body and across their back, there appears to be some kind of leather and metal harness. Marta and Vornushka, it's your turn. <laughs> Vornushka seems to be distractedly <laughs> absent. So <laughs> she sees Tira make that badass attack and is feeling competitive and distracted. <laughs> um, hmm. There's Vornushka. Perfect. Too bad Marta's going. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Too late. <laughs> dibs! Dibs! You snooze, you lose. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, that's so... Hmm. Interesting. Marta wants to get a better look at these... Or at least try to get a better look at these harnesses. You can do... She can. You can do an investigation check. Uh, they're on the ground yeah. right near you, so you could use your turn to uh, take a closer look. Um, I will let you make that investigation check with advantage. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. These harnesses, as you look at them, you see that they're made of a very durable leather, very thick leather with, um, with steel buckles. Um, you can see areas where across the back side where the harnesses kind of strap around the bodies. There's a place where almost like it looks like a lead, like in a horse tack or in a, in a, a dog or, or similar animal where you could hook a lead onto it. Um, these also, because of the size of these creatures and the way these harnesses are, they look custom made. Uh, somebody took the time to make special harnesses for these creatures. And, sir, you said that they are still attached or they're on the ground now? They're wearing them. They're wearing them, right. Okay. Yeah, they're on their bodies. Okay. You said that that was my turn then? Of, yeah, of you, t that. you took the time to, take, to investigate this. Yeah. That was your action. Okay. You still have a bonus action and movement if you want it. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, sh she's going to use her bonus action to, uh, create a, a bunch of these, uh, dragonflies come together and almost will form this, uh, dagger as she casts spiritual weapon. Oh, cool. And you can attack yeah. with it as part of the action? Yeah. Uh, 17 to hit. Which one are you attacking? You have two that are prone and one that is still up and has not been struck by anybody. I want, Marta wants to, if possible, focus on the harnesses. Okay. Uh, so you're going to attack one and, and <clears throat> attempt to strike the harness. Yeah. Okay. Um... I will say that that will be a disadvantage because you're, it's okay. basically a cold shot. Which one are you targeting? The one that's prone. Okay, the one. Oh, but there's two that, that are prone. Uh, but it's a rain. No, the one that's not harmed. Sorry. The one that's not harmed? Perfect. Yeah. Yep, that one. Okay, so at disadvantage, then uh, that's a 14. That'll That'll do it. It'll hit. Nice. Nice. Um, so with that, um, I'll say since you were targeting and you did hit it, uh, you can prevent doing damage to the creature itself if that's what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and you are able to cut 
at this harness and sort of you cut across where where it comes at the at the back side of it uh slicing it with a spiritual weapon um uh, i picture it almost like sliding in like as if you were holding a dagger and just slicing at this leather and you yeah. see the harness sort of fall sideways uh and askew it is no longer like it doesn't have tension on this creature anymore um uh so that will be your turn okay for nushka <clears throat> two prone one up one that mm -hmm. marta has just appeared to take a spiritual weapon attack at but hasn't done any real damage um and i would say those that didn't notice it with this action that marta did you would notice that marta made a a action that cut a harness that you may not have previously noticed mm -hmm. okay um vanushka is going to see that and as marta what were you going for uh, you see there, they have uh, those harnesses. They are um, pulling their punches. They're pulling their punches. Because of the harnesses? Marta shakes her head. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, Vernushka is going to jump and attack the one that is... Um, standing non-prone you do so you do have one that you were engaged with that's at your feet oh. that isn't dead yet you oh, can, okay. you can absolutely do that but you will draw an opportunity attack from the prone one if you change your target okay. no let's finish this one off i set my feet okay all right ready yep 18 that's a hit i forgot nice. to mention when they're prone they lose uh, one to their AC. This one already lost one to its AC. Wow. So that absolutely hits. 19, net 12. What does this look like as you kill this one with the uh, blood axe, oh. Vernushka? Um, as Vernushka slams her axe upon the like cervical vertebrae of the creature, it decapitates it. And um, for a moment, you see like these wisp of like what looks like to be like its essence flow into the blood axe. And Vonuska smiles and then looks over at the one that is standing, not prone. Uh, so you I'm looking for this ability in your weapon. Uh, so the temporary hit points that you got from Marta's effect, yeah, replace that with 39. Wow, you gained Holy. 39 temporary hit points. Because that effing axe? Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, I think you would all see that some sort, something de departs from this creature and there's this very much like a, a rushing of almost like a um, almost Quickening. like oh, yeah, and you see you, you just see as this happens you see Vernushka for a moment Vernushka's muscles all tense you see the cords in her neck and you see just every muscle tightens as she grips the axe and then the eyes open and you see a newfound strength in Vornushka. oh my god yeah. and she kind of like does a um, color guard twirl with the axe <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard band <laughs> moves <laughs> applied to a, a weapon like that. I love it. Um, Tira. Okay. I see this and I was very astounded. And then the color guard twirl was like, uh, <coughs> Tira is still raging. 
I want to uh, attack the one that's still in front of me, which is still alive, correct? Yeah. I really wish that that uh, drum, that weird drum core music that shows up every once in a while had started <laughs> at that moment. That? Yes. <laughs> it would have been perfect. Uh, that's a 23 to hit. Let's go. So this is the one that's standing. It's right in front of me that I attacked the last time. Oh, that one's dead. Misha killed it. Oh, then I want to attack the one that's standing. Yeah, sorry. Okay, that's the one that uh, Marta cut the harness on. Yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, and that, holy shit. Um, that is going to be 14 points of damage plus an additional two, so 16 normal damage. And then an additional six points of cold damage. I got almost max on that one. So that's 22 total damage. Correct. Again, just flaying into this thing with this great sword, and f the blood sprays are just freezing uh, as they lance out as you as you do this. So that's your first yep. attack. Yep, I attack again. That is only a fourteen to hit it. Uh, a fourteen is what you needed. Oh my god! I found the line, everybody. I found the line. Uh, that is 13 points of damage plus 12 is 15 points of damage. <laughs> That's two I meant. Sorry, 15. And then an additional five points of cold damage. That's another 20. Tira, oh. how do you kill this one? Let's go. So, this, so Tira sees Bornushka kill this other one, and then she just kind of comes in with these, like, whack, and then, like, one great upward swipe with her with her sword, the arc of blood that freezes almost freezes over the top of her in like an arc and it comes down and is like sitting over top of her like an arch. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doc. Yeah, and, uh, oh wait, do you oh, have anything quick, else? Is there anything that's still alive? Hmm. Are there any that are still alive? Um, I would like to frenzy and attack them, if so. Yeah, actually, yes. There's one more that's prone. I'm going to attack that one with a frenzy attack, please. I've had it. 22 to hit. It's a hit. Actually, roll with advantage because it's prone. Okay. <laughs> Not a nat 20. Okay. Uh, so that just is a hit. Um, and then that's going to be 16 points of damage... Plus an additional one point of gold damage. So that's 17 points total. All right. So, yeah, you lay into this one for your third attack. Now it's Doc's turn. Okay. So there's one one of them left? Yep. And it's the one, one of the ones you knocked prone. That you shoved for the first time that's ever. Right. Very, right. very well. It was a heck of a shove. Yes. I'm... Uh master of the shove um all right well doc is going to uh for science um he is going to <laughs> all things for take a running leap at the ank uh and then he's gonna like do a belly flop onto it and start hugging it the one that you're standing next to yeah. Yep. So you're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna back up to run at it. He just ruining, bolts. It's ruining just everything. Jeez. Um, he's Thanks, gonna Dad. start. He's gonna start cuddling the ankh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. They they all sat in silence for a second. None of them sure what to say. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think from Mizia, you just see this moment of Mizia just sort of cocks their head. Really, Doctor? And then again, you hear this boom. And that is. Oh, that was almost a nat 20. Um, it fails. Uh, so it is going to take 1d12. 
<clears throat> you feel the vibrations through this onkeg that you're cuddling, Doc. <laughs> As Mizia Cast told the dead, and then you all hear a new voice that says, Are you all right? Let's see what kind of uh, recluse uh, area you've managed. Oh, dear gods! What in the. What is happening? As you all see a. Uh, a gnome oh, uh, wearing goggles, uh, wearing. Um, uh, what looks to be basically like leather armor and gloves and uh, is holding in his hands um, a length of four leather um, tethers mm. as he climbs out of the, one of their holes covered in dirt and he just looks around at all of you and you just see him go, oh, shit. And you just <laughs> see this whoom, as he casts, uh, casts a little bit of magic. And you just see over his entire body just a shimmer go. Whoom. And then he takes a defensive stance as he looks at all of you. What? What have you done? What have you done to my... My beloved, my beloved creatures. Uh. He starts looking around. Oda, Orla. Oh, oh God, mama. they have names. Oh no, Tira at this this display of affection her rage drops and she's kind of looking confused at Marta and at Doc and at Mizia Marta's gonna go over to one of them the one that he's near to be fair we didn't really they well they attacked us first she says as she like leans down, um, she's gonna cast Revivify on one of them. No! Are you? <laughs> no, not God! <laughs> yep. I need you to. Uh... No. It immediately kills Vornushka. <laughs> I need you to make. <laughs> I need you to make a deception check. Or a performance check, depending on whether you're trying to deceive him or not. Oh my god. When you say that they attacked first. Well, I don't think Marta's lying, because they did. <laughs> they exploded from the ground. To her perception. So, so entering a room like Kramer is an attack. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so then yeah. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to roll an insight from this gnome um, as as you're kneeling down towards it he's looking around like I, I find it highly unlikely that, that they would have attacked you they're very very highly trained I do not see them making such an what are you doing haven't you done enough <laughs> as you lean over to uh, to cast you, would you say you were doing revivify? Yeah, um, uh, as you lean over to it and you cast the spell, uh, and the creature, um, begins to stir as it revives to one hit point its shell is cracked and shattered and there's big wounds in it as it's just sitting there sort of <laughs> and he just looks at you I feel like you've made it worse somehow you, you don't <laughs> understand I've I raised all of them from the same clutch 
Do you know how hard it is to train on cakes? It is she, very like, difficult. <laughs> For a moment. And then she... I do not mean any offense, but it seems a little... Uh, short-sighted of you to let them roam free like this, no? I had kind of assumed that being under the forest... That taking my Ankegs off the leash would be safe. Ornushka is um, doing that kid that thing that like sixth and seventh graders do when they're trying not to laugh when a teacher or something really funny has happened. Mm -hmm. They try not to like make a scene about so like <coughs> <coughs> and literally has to turn around mm -hmm. as you see the shoulders shaking. As Farnushka is like trying not to burst out laughing. From one of the uh from one of the holes that the Ankicks came up from, you see the dirt beginning to shift. As you see a small set of hands come up, and then you see another face pop up uh with goggles on as a gnomish woman pops up. As she pops up, she says, uh, Zook, is it okay? Um, oh, oh dear. Uh, um, what? she turns and kind of looks down into the hole. Nisa, Nix, stay. Stay where you are, girls. Oh, no. Oh, my what? God. What? What? What is happening, Zook? <laughs> <laughs> Tira would Tira would resheath her sword and kind of like hold up her hands and be like, "We we, you you beasts came out and uh, gave us quite a fright. We thought they were atta attacking we killed, us. We fucking killed them. Shut up, Vanushka. <laughs> she's like trying to walk away. She's trying to like and cover her mouth because that little with the goggles popped up. It just was too much. Was and why. it's so <laughs> sad because this is a family. The man walks over and he walks over towards the one that where you are, Doc. And excuse me, sir. Uh, what in the nine hells are you doing to my young kick? Obviously, I'm cuddling it. If this by pushing them, so... I I cannot begin to explain to all of you how absolutely utterly absurd all of this is. Well, I see four ank eggs. I see three of them are dead. I'm cuddling the live one. Maybe instead of giving me a hard time, you should say thank you, tall, thick stranger. <laughs> I, I am absolutely in no position to be thanking any of you. That's so gaslighting. My, my creatures were simply taking to the air, clearing the way for my family and I to get a bit of fresh air, taking a break, a pit stop, if you will, on our journey. Did not realize these... we were going to be waylaid in the middle of the forest. What were these beasts trained for anyway? You said they were trained. What are you using for? Hunting? A little bit of hunky, hunting, digging the tunnels so it's safer for us to travel underground. Clearly, we should have stayed underground. Those are facts. <laughs> Tira it's, is looking at Marta and kind of like shrugging. Like, it Marta is, is casting of... like cure wounds on this one, trying to like... <laughs> But like <laughs> stealthily to like not you know <laughs> draw attention, um, but is trying to heal this thing up. But casting wounds on a hamburger. Well, I mean, like, it's a living creature. So, You've revivified oh, so it. You can absolutely yeah, cat cure some wounds on it. So uh, it heals eleven hit points. Okay. Listen, we were just trying to get our way through to the grandfather tree here. We were looking for an offering. We got to this clearing. We found all these flowers. And, and your, your creatures, they popped up. Scared your the pilgrims shit heading to the grandfather tree. Ah, uh, I guess. 
Oh, something head into the grandfather tree. Well, with the summer equinox coming up, it's it's uh, not uncommon for pilgrims to make their way there. My family and I were were actually traveling in that direction, uh, hoping to make quicker time by traveling underground. Um, listen, I paid a hundred and fifty gold apiece for these eggs, all from the same clutch. If your friend will release that one, that is Kipper, <laughs> and Kipper. <laughs> you you do appear to have have you? Oh, perhaps perhaps Orla was not as wounded as I thought, but that still leaves the manners of Oda and Mina. I would like to take my family and move safely away from all of you. I believe 300 gold for the loss of my Ankex, plus another 300 gold for emotional damage. No! <laughs> Hell no! Here's 75, because you weren't doing a good job keeping your things on a tether. Well, Vonushka's. And what will you tell my daughters? <laughs> to keep your animals on a tether next time? Hey, and and uh, Tira would step forward, and, and Tira would pull out, I don't know where we got it, but it's loot that I have, and it's a cup that's worth 250 gold. And she would pull this cup out, and she would, she would hand it kind of subtly, giving Vonushka a dirty look. And very sincerely, Tira would hand this cup over and be like, Tell your daughters we're very sorry. They scared the shit out of us. We thought we were going to die. I didn't think I was going to die. Make a persuasion check. Okay. 19. There you go. He looks at you. And he looks at the cup, and you see his eyes linger on that cup for a moment. He looks at you. Tell your friend to release Kippa, and we will be on our way as he plucks the cup out of your hand. And I, I say, Doc, if you're done with your cuddle puddle, Okay. And Doc will stand up. He walks over and he reaches down and he attaches two of the leads, one to Kipper and one to Orla. They really are quite remarkable if you have the patience to dedicate to training them. They chew through the ground as if it were butter. And it is sometimes very fortunate the things that they turn up buried in the soil. Now I'm going to have to find more and train them up. And it appears as though you have given me an opportunity to teach a very important lesson to my daughters. And he turns and he pulls on the leads and the two remaining Ankegs sort of clamber to their feet a little unsteady. And he makes some clicking noises out of the side of his mouth as he just sort of... And they instantly respond and move around behind him and you see from what this hole you see this woman and then you see two smaller gnomish girls Aww. peering up as he takes this cup that you've given him and he sort of tucks it into a pouch girls it is very important that you learn that the world is full of miserable people willing to take whatever from whoever 
Lock their faces in your minds. And the Onkegs immediately burrow down and he wraps their uh, the leads around his wrist and lets them start to pull him. And as he gets pulled behind and starts to disappear below the ground, he just looks at all of you and goes, Oh my god. Are the other two Onkegs on the surface still? Are they just left behind? Yeah, the dead, they're dead bodies. One of them was completely shattered. Are they edible? Um, I would say they're as edible as uh, grasshoppers and crickets and Ugh. cockroaches, whatever, beetles. Uh, <laughs> oh, maybe reminiscent of very large yucca beetles, M. There we go. Oh, <laughs> little throwback go. to Tomb of Annihilation. <laughs> there we go. You know what they call this? A full circle. <laughs> and as. Zook um, and his family disappear with two of their Ankegs, leaving behind the two that you unceremoniously killed. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Oh, God. We still don't have a fall offering, do we? <laughs> no. We have, we these, were, we have these beetles, that, these giant bugs, right? I mean, autumn is the time for bugs. <laughs> Uh, maybe. Um, All right, we're going to go ahead and take about a 10 minute break. Uh, we will see you on the other side. And we're back. You've just killed two of the family pets of. Uh... Oh my God. No, it's, it, it, it's more like. Uh, I was telling him after during the break when you all left. It's It's more like like beasts of burden uh kind okay. of a thing it's less less family pets and more like um you know like you killed a couple of his goats or something okay but instead they of goats they names. were big they were big chitinous uh monstrosities <sighs> okay. um i also believe one of the last things that happened was vornushka wondering if they were edible um <laughs> but i mean she surveyed them immediately and was like no gross this this little side little side deal uh dealing with these things has only cost you uh a total of you know 15 20 minutes um you found three spring winter and summer flowers that mizia has in a bouquet um and you still have most of two days to travel to get where you're going what would you like to do Tira would rotate her shoulder and just be like, well, we should get get on the road and keep moving. We've got three of the four seasons, I think, yeah? And she would kind of like look over at Marta. Yes, we have uh, three of the four, but uh, I still have fall, Autumn. She's like looking around at like any of the leaves or like mm -hmm. just kind of um as they begin to walk just keeping an eye out mm -hmm. all right go ahead and make an investigation check as you continue traveling along uh 17 okay um so i believe you all were moving at a fast pace because you have a deadline you're trying to meet uh, this encounter had occurred a couple hours into um, into your uh, travels. Um, you you spend most of this day, uh, which was a decent day. No wind, no rain, clear skies, traveling under the canopy of this forest. Um, I need somebody to roll a d20 for me, please. Not it. I'll do it. I'll do it. You got it? Yeah. yeah. M got it first. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Nine! You travel for the rest of the day, uh, pretty uneventfully. Um, you're finding... Given that it's well into the month of Kythorn, uh, you're just not seeing any remnants of autumn. 
other than dead leaves. Um, when you pass by coniferous trees, you find maybe a few pine cones on the ground and some dried pine needles um, and even a handful of pine boughs. But um, that's about all you're able to find. But near the end of this first day... Um, you begin to notice that the, the forest is starting to thin out a bit, um, in a way that you're, you, you get the sense that this particular forest that you're in, uh, might be, uh, you might be running close to the end of it. Um, it's something that you could, uh, you have to make a decision if you want to stay in the forest and camp for the night, or if you want to press on a little bit further until you clear this forest. Well, Mado, what do you think? Should we keep going and camp or should we camp here? How, how uh, pressed for time are we? Marta like looks up and does Marta have any idea how far we are? Well, you knew that it was about uh, a little over two days journey. Uh, you moved at a fast pace. Um, you think that if you press on for a couple more hours, um, you could get there by the end of tomorrow. Which is end of tomorrow which is the 19th hold on let me let me do some math real quick because it was midday midday. sorry uh you wouldn't get there tomorrow but that would get you there midday on the day of the equinox okay so then we if we push on then we would have some time to look better for a fall thing yes okay yeah i think marta turns to tira and well, I think that uh, if we could push on a little bit further, we could get there comfortably and then look for uh, a fall item when we have some time. All right. Um, <laughs> Marta. And Vunisha's going to kind of like lean down when she says this. Oh, <laughs> so condescending. <laughs> <laughs> I know hey. that I'm not, I'm not the... Uh, well, when I kill something with the axe, its life force gets transferred into me for a moment. And it's an equivalent exchange. And we're just going to look over at the offering and says, I don't think that's equivalent exchange for my brother's soul, if you know what I mean. She looks to you uh, Vernushka, and, and she says, Equivalency is relative. You value life, blood, you value violence, and so to you, violence for violence, blood for blood, is an equivalent exchange. But to someone or something that uh, values other things, <coughs> for them, Perhaps a flower is worth a life. Perhaps something rare, something beautiful is worth something more than uh, the blood of another. It's uh, You raise an interesting point, uh, an interesting uh, evaluation, but keep in mind that these are uh, beings the forest of nature. <laughs> I suppose. And Rusha's gonna, you know, kind of walk away. That's like the best you can get out of a thank you. <laughs> yeah. I look at Marta and I'm like, I suppose. <laughs> Marta just like smiles, uh, not like condescendingly or anything, just. I think that uh, she 
tries to make complicated situations simple. I think that is how that she has gotten through her life. Yeah, you have a kinder thought process than I do. Anyway, we should probably keep going. Don't want to waste too much time. Doc, Mizia, you guys good to keep going for a few more hours? Yes, yes. Sure. I still don't know where we're going or why. We're going to the grandfather tree, Doc, because we have to make an offering to the dr the, the, the dryads uh, to see if they can help us find Vaughn. What happened to Vaughn? <sighs> and Tira would just shake her head and walk forward and just kind of tromp forward into the forest. Are you talking? Like... Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, I would just... Yeah. Oh, okay. Vornishka's going to be like... <laughs> Oh, God, I hate when she walks upwind. Fuck off. And she would just keep walking. Doc will <laughs> lean into Marta um, and he's going to say, <laughs> What happened to Vorn? Oh, well. He died. And she says as he, and she like looks to, to Doc. He did? Sure did. When? <laughs> she looks to him like very quizzically and just says fascinating you are so fascinating and she like writes down something in her Do in her journal I have a question do we remember like was Doc Doc was conscious and, and aware when Vorn died correct can I do a can I do like an invent like a like a I don't know, wisdom check. wisdom check to remember, like Doc was trapped in a painting. When Vorn died. I don't no, think, I don't he, think was. he was. No. When did he you get out, released from the suspended. painting? Suspended. Yeah. Right when we got right when we got there, and then he was suspended up above in the in, in the roots and, and shit. Mm hmm Oh yeah. And I and we remember that <sighs> Okay. Yeah. yeah. Alright weirdo and Tira is kind of putting this together trying to get her mind off of Vorn being dead just trying to figure Doc out as she's tromping through the woods she's not looking for a fall item she's just trying not to get <coughs> Vornushka in the face mm, so um Vorn died and why are we going to the grandfather tree again well, we're going to see if uh, we can help Vaughn uh, not be dead and uh, also to perhaps uh, help your friend, your total friend, um, not turn into or turn into stone and get the help, get him help with that. What are you talking about? Which total friend? She shrugs. She's like, I don't know his name. <laughs> she <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then so um, Vernus goes closer to the conversation, what? and is going to turn around and, and like look and say, "Are you making a joke? Because it's not funny." Making a joke about what? Not remembering. No. The last thing I remember was we were talking about little one. And we we're talking about Little One, and we had to go into a book. Apparently, there was a portal in the book. What was the name of the book? Um, it was something about... Ca no, is that... Mm, the Price of Beauty. We were about to go into that book, and I said, Are you sure we have to pay? Because I need gold, you see. I'm working on developing a village of kobolds and raising their standard of living so that they no longer have to thieve or serve as bandits along the road. And I thought to myself, well, I don't want to give any gold because beauty could be expensive. And then we were also looking for our friend Little One who disappeared allegedly into this book. But we had no confirmation of that. We just knew that he disappeared contemporaneously around the same time as taking out this book. And as you're saying that, Vanushka's eyes like start to get more and more slanted and like uh, Tira 
are you guys walking as you're saying this or are you just still standing yeah, back? we're still walking oh, there's no okay. reason to stop walking so tira is probably not too far ahead she's hearing this and she's getting more and more confused and then as soon as warnushka says tira she's like yeah what do you hear what they're saying yes i don't know nothing about a book or any of your prior shenanigans what is going on i i kind of like roll my eyes and be like we're wasting time and then she would turn though to doc and be like doc you're being you're being strange and that's really something to say to you you don't remember our friend togo our total friend yeah i, I remember togo togo was the one that was friends with mizia from way back in the day when togo allegedly was saved by Mizia, which we yes. all thought was strange because Mizia doesn't seem like a person who would save anyone for any reason. But then Togo followed Mizia around wherever they went, but they got lost. It was a very circuitous route between their connection. Doc, I don't and remember. I, I would put my hand on, I would put my hand on Doc's chest and I would what just say. What does circuitous mean? Uh, don't worry about it. And, and Tira would just like put her hand on Doc's chest and just say, <clears throat> Don't you remember what happened to Vaughn? You saw uh, it. You were you were awake. Uh, Marta said he died. Who killed right, him? Right in front of us, Doc. I, it was it was a uh, shadow heart. She was there. She was right in front of us. She she said a word and he just went. Where you don't remember any of that? N no, none of that rings a bell. All I remember is we were talking about the book and then there was something about little one and I was really haggling about the price because I was very concerned about my overall gold intake because my friends in the Kobo village need a lot of supplies and I have a... Tira, when did this happen? What is he talking about? This is a long time before we met you. It's not important. It's it's before we came to the Temple of the Restful Lily. Temple Marta... of the Restful Lily. That's a lovely name. Can Marta roll something as she's oh, like watching no. this like you may not you may not no <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see. no i mean <laughs> you can you could try to insight yeah she wants the insight to see if tira's and tira is just her face is growing more and more concerned and she's kind of looking concerned specifically at mizia because mizia would know all of our adventures up until now tira what the hell is going on what kind of trickery is this i don't know if i did i would say something doc the last thing you remember is before we when we had the book the the price of beauty in our hands that's right we were about to open it, and we were talking about the price of beauty, and if we could haggle it down some. And Vorn was there, and Togo too. What? But we were talking about Little One, because Little One was missing. And someone, was it irony? I'm not sure. Someone thought that Little One might have gone into the book, but we weren't sure. So we had to investigate and find out whether or not Little One was there. Isn't Little One the one you killed, Tira? You killed Little One? Onushka, now is not the time. And come to think of it, who are you? And he's going to look at Vornushka. I am Vornushka, Vorn's sister. And she kind of stamps the axe down next to her side. Don't you remember you and Mizia were talking about how... What's the word they use? Not smart I am. Oh, no. I don't remember that, but it certainly sounds like me. <sighs> And Ornushka's going to look over at Mizia, and then at Doc, and then at Tira, and then at... I can't with you all. I really can't. I try to be nice. And... Uh... If you don't like it, you can always leave. <laughs> I will as soon as I can, Tira. And 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 Tira goes to Marta and be like, I don't have time to explain everything, but but he's his memories. They they we've been here for days, days and days, and he doesn't remember. 
yeah, Martyr just like shrugs. I, I don't know uh, what is happening to your and friend. Monsieur, what about you? <laughs> what so do hard. you know or remember? I am simply trying to keep my keep myself from getting too dirty walking through these woods. I'm too tired to worry about the state of each of you individually. Though I imagine you see them sort of flicking their eyes towards Doc with a look of concern. Uh, is what is what the Doc says true or true? Like, what is going on? I mean, I think we should try to figure it out on the road. We have to keep going. Otherwise, we're not going to make it to the grandfather tree in time. <laughs> Give it Thought flowers and bark tree. And Tira is just like pissed and seething and concerned about Doc and concerned about Vorn and just like there's all the things like we have to go. We have to go now. Doc, are you good to talk while we while we are on the road? I mean, we've been walking this whole time. <laughs> That's strange. I assumed we stopped when the conversation got more intense. But anyway, whatever. And uh, we either continue walking or start walking, I assume. <laughs> kind of a combination of both. You know, like, friends yeah. kind of start and mm. stop. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Match. I need somebody, whoever's leading the way, to make a survival check, please. I I'm going to say that it's going to be uh, that it would have to be Mizia, Marta, or Vorn because they were the only ones that knew of the grandfather tree. Mm. Vornushka. Vorn is dead. Vornushka? Okay. You still have Vorn in your name. It's her nickname. <laughs> That's right. Probably Marta, I would guess. Um, yeah. Start calling you yeah. Vorny. Oh. Don't you dare. Well... <laughs> Wait, mm. did Vornushka just growl at the DM? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Cosmic entities inside of you. <laughs> Otherworldly beings. Amazing. Oh, I only got a 10. Roll me. Roll me a D8. Three. Uh, three. Okay. <laughs> okay. You do not know how lucky Four you are. Four more members of the family Crustacea leap from the ground. No. God. No, this was this was survival related. So failing a survival check, a D8 determines in what direction you get lost. You chose a way that fortunately keeps you moving in the right direction. Awesome. As sailing forward. Yep, that's exactly what you do. As you, uh, Marta, you realize that you're not entirely familiar with this region. Um, and perhaps just on a hope and a prayer to your deity. You just keep going in the direction you think is right. And as it's getting darker in the woods, fortunately, they're thinning out even more. And you are able to reach a place where it's not just a clearing. Uh, you see the trees are further and further apart. And you can now see that as you emerge from the forest, this first section for quite a ways in either direction you see these hills just sort of rolling grassland uh just dotted with tree stumps uh this section of the forest has been logged very thoroughly um looking to your left which would uh now that you're out in the clearing, you can kind of see is more or less north, northeast. Um, you can see uh, off in the distance um, the high forest that you need to traverse to. And you can see straight ahead 
toward a, towards the southeast, the uh, in the distance, the road um, that traverses between the Silverwood and the High Forest, uh, known as the Evermore Way, the road that runs between um, Everland and um, down into the Deserin, uh Valley. Um, you can see as you emerge that you're not going to be able to make it to the high forest before nightfall. Um, but looking sort of to your right, looks to be a couple miles away, enough that it would probably be nightfall by the time you got there if you chose to go, but it's not in the direction you're traveling. You see a uh, the palisade walls of a village uh, or town um, that uh, you can just see where some of the uh, some lights have lanterns have been lit they appear as as distant dots of light um, it's hard to know exactly how big this town is um, go ahead and give me Marda, well, actually, I would say anybody that's from this region uh, can make a check. Oh, everybody. What kind of check? Oh, yeah, I should tell you what kind of check you're making. <laughs> what kind of role? <laughs> uh, I would say history, <laughs> history or survival. Kira does a back handspring for no reason at all. Uh, 20 on history. I got a 12. 18 on survival. Is ya? Is a 21. What'd you have, Doc? 20. Oh. <clears throat> and what'd you get, Marta? Did you roll? Yeah, I got a 12. So winning as you're standing here looking over this area um <clears throat> Mizia kind of steps forward a little ways looks back both directions looks in the direction of the town and says ah yes yes this this would be the ever more way which would mean Everlund is in that direction, pointing sort of to the northeast, which would mean that is Alliston's hold on the edge of the Evermoors. Is it friendly? Like if we walked in there, would we have a place to sleep and eat? <clears throat> I've never actually been. I believe no. I believe that Alliston's hold uh, is responsible for clearing the Everland Way the Evermore Way um, whatever the heck the name of this road was I just said the way. Uh, Evermore the Evermore Way um, as I recall this area from the Evermores or also known as the Trollmores is quite infested with trolls. Alliston's hold is an attempt to make the road more passable and safe. But it is at least a mile or two in that direction, and we are going this way. Tara would kind of put her hands on her hips and uh, just sort of think, like, Mada, what do you think? Probably take us an hour or two. Well, I think that it might be worth it, um, so that we actually get to the place and not get eaten by trolls in the night. Um, and who knows, they might have something there from fall, autumn. I'm sure they have <gasps> lots of pilgrims. Like that go. amber ale. They might have amber ale in one of the taverns. That is exactly what I was thinking. Yes. Yes. I think we should go to the town. My vote is yes. Okay. <laughs> Vanushka, um, I did roll an 18 on survival. Does that tell me anything different than what the group already knows? No. 
Okay. No, so just a reminder that checks like these are not about whether or not. It's just How at much? the higher numbers you know more sure it's it's more a determination of how much you know okay okay so we start making our way towards that place yeah. mm -hmm. all right uh just with the rolling sure. hill and the group you have it it takes you close to an hour uh to get there um by which time it is definitely dark um meaning uh i believe Tira, you may be the only one that's struggling unless you light a lamp, torch or something. I would light a torch. And as you light that torch, um, you feel a hand rest on your shoulder. It's a big, heavy hand. I shrug immediately and, like, turn. It's Vernushka. Yeah. And she has a pile of bent leaves, and she goes, this may help if you go into town. Bent leaves? No, mint mint leaves oh go fuck yourself and she would like like what are you talking about uh and and she would uh just keep walking and not take them and, and vornushka is gonna like eat some of them and she goes i was just trying to be nice mm. you see a hand reach up like as marta grabs the leaf as well and just pops it in her mouth <laughs> <as> she... <laughs> thank and, you and, and vornushka's gonna like like shrug her shoulders like right like it helps <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah so after about an hour uh you arrive to this uh what is essentially looks like a fort um what the heck <laughs> my water bottle just popped it sounded like a gunshot oh. going off next to me <laughs> oh god jeez <laughs> um Thick logs sharpened at the top form these palisade walls around this fort. Wooden towers in the corners. Um, uh, and you can see that there are uh, a set of heavy wooden doors that are closed um, at the entrance to this uh, fortification. Um, and flanking it either side of this entryway are a couple of towers. And you see a torch come down from above uh, like leaning out and you see the torch light sort of looking down and there are a couple torches lit near the front I and uh, my torch. you also hear this sort of uh, the sound of at least four bowstrings being drawn mm -hmm. alright that's close enough who are you and what do you want? Who are you and what do you want? Oh my god, Doc. Ugh. Travelers, just using the road, looking for a place to sleep. Doc, be nice. I'm always nice. I was just asking a question. It seemed oh. completely reasonable, right? And he's going to look up at the, at the person speaking. Mm hmm. Where are you coming from and where are you going to? Uh, we're coming uh, from the Temple of the Restful Lily and we're headed to the Grandfather Tree. Pilgrims. Cutting it awful short this year. Yeah, we didn't plan on being pilgrims. It sounds like you didn't plan too much. It's after dark and you're showing up to a fortified hold. Look, if you don't want our gold in your businesses, we could just make camp out here. You hear some murmuring up at the top. Is it just the five of you? Yeah, who else would it be? Well, maybe you're a band of orcs, and you're just the vanguard. Your raiding party's waiting just beyond the tree line. Maybe you're trolls in disguise down from the Evermorse. <laughs> and Marta looks down at her very tiny self. <laughs> and, and Tira would kind of smile and just be like, 
You all are out here in the middle of nowhere, so I'm gonna forgive your wild imaginations. No, we are not trolls in the skies, and no, despite some of our appearances, we are not an orc vanguard. Are you mute, uh, Ricky? You're muted. It's a good thing I am muted because I probably got some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there are swearings happening. Um, and Tira just kind of like shrugs and be like, Look, are you going to let us in or not? Make a persuasion check. Oh, God. Or intimidation, okay. your choice. Okay. Um, we'll go with intimidation because that's better. And that's a 22. All right, all right. No reason to get your small clothes bunched up. We'll let you in. You keep your weapons sheathed. Keep your magic to yourselves. If you're looking for a place to stay, you're going to want to head over to the Flaming Flagon. Cool. I love it already. And Tira would just kind of nod and... You hear the sort of, uh, the sound of tension being relieved from bowstrings. And there's a heavy, a sound of a heavy thump from up above. Uh, sounds like whoever this guard is stomping his feet. And then you hear the, the sound of a heavy bar being removed from the gate. And then the gate opens just enough to allow, in fact, Doc and Vernushka will have to turn sideways to pass through the gate. As you head into Alliston's Hold. Alliston's Hold. Um, here, I will drop it in chat so you can... Add that and on your map that I gave you, I believe it's annotated by a black dot at the bottom of the silver wood, uh, next to the Evermores, um, across. Incredible. Uh, so that is Alliston's hold. Um, as you enter into the hold, um, you uh, you see inside that there is a um. Uh, there appears to be some sort of garrison, um, and thank you to RQ Stefan for throwing five domain tomes your way oh, with that uh, bitch cheer. Thank you so much for that. Um, as you head into this region, let me get this uh, situated so we don't forget those. Amazing. Um, you see to your immediate left, uh, you can see that there's a fortified structure, uh, that looks like it's probably some sort of garrison for the town guards of Alliston's Hold. Um, you see there are some, some small buildings immediately to your right. Um, the town sort of opens up into, uh, an area that looks like, um, Though right now, the um, the stalls appear to all be closed, uh, you sort of walk into an area that there looks to be during the day possibly an open market that is here. Um, cool. This town looks, or this fort rather, basically village contained within this town, uh, looks like it houses somewhere between three and five hundred people um overall it's pretty decent not sprawling too much um and uh you do see a few people walking around uh, there's some people that are leaving the market areas um and uh a few people that uh you can see some of the houses smoke curling up from chimneys you can see lights lantern lights glowing from inside uh, you can hear just little bits in the warm weather. Windows are open. You can hear bits of conversation, laughter. Um, 
dog barking in the distance. Uh, as you walk in past the market, you can see down another thoroughfare, uh, you can see the lar- one of the larger buildings, um, two stories, lots of lights coming from it, and you hear music from within, laughter. Um, and just in case you were wondering um, whether or not this was the Flaming Flagon, uh, mm. you immediately see from the front door as it bursts open, you see a man come backpedaling through the door like this. And he kind of hits the edge of where this sort of uh, raised platform of uh, of a deck to this place is. And he kind of, oh, oh, and you see a figure, a tall, very burly human man come walking out of the door and he grabs the man by the shirt before he falls over. And he goes, eh, let me give you a hand. Pah! And punches him in the face and sends him flying oh, backwards. I love this town already. Amazing. And I think that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Uh, as you have arrived oh. in Alliston's <laughs> hold. Um, I love it. I love it. On the night of the 18th of Kythorn. Uh, so yeah, next week we'll see uh, what kind of trouble you can all get into at the, the Flaming Flagon and and uh, hopefully have a relatively decent night uh, so you can continue on your way to the Grandfather Tree because you are on a schedule. Uh, but we'll see schedule. what happens. Um, I gotta say... I've said it kind of behind the scenes. I'm really loving this more open world take because I don't know this whole world. I have to scramble. I can only have so much prepared. So I have to scramble as you're making your way and figuring out where you're going. And okay, what's here? What's here? Okay, there's this thing. And uh, so this will be fun. Um, Oh, yeah. So we all are from here. So we should know it. Maybe we should do some research team. Uh, well, you're from the region, but I wouldn't. I don't know that how far you would necessarily Correct. roam. I mean, that's stuff we can we can mitigate with uh, with roles in game, because um, this is still part of the Silver Marches, where most of you are are relatively from this area. Uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, thank you everybody who uh, tuned in. Um, tonight joined us for this game um and uh reminder uh to tune in on wednesday for the finale of the darkness outside of broken branch that will be pre-recorded but we hope to see you there i know i'll be in chat uh you may see a couple other people there as well uh so be sure to tune in to see that finale uh, Thursday night, the Dawnbringers is on hiatus until the new year, but I will be doing a special uh, just chatting stream, uh, creating some uh, role-playing scenarios using 1985 games, the Deck of Stories, the Genesis box. Um, and then Friday, I will be over on Nerdarchy Live, uh, playing in Untraditionally Arcane at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, sorry, Nerdarchy, not Nerdarchy Live. Just Nerdarchy YouTube channel. Um, in just a moment, we're going to throw a raid over to our friend Tildalu. We haven't raided Tildalu in a little while. So, um, huge thank you, as I said, to everybody who tuned in tonight. Shout outs to Carrie and Tamiko and our uh, wonderful friend, RQ Stefan, and moderator and clipmaster uh, for that. Uh, donation of five domain tomes to the cause uh we appreciate that um shout out to you if you are somebody who likes to uh lurk silently in the chat we appreciate you all the same well and hope you enjoy our uh enjoy our games and of course a huge thank you to these amazing players uh that I love that we get to go on this journey together, um, having a blast. So thank you, Gary, Carrie, M, 
Ricky. And though he wasn't here with us, he was here with us in spirit, Dwight, without whom this would just be me talking to myself for a couple of hours. With that, we're going to go ahead and end this stream the same way we end every stream. And you can say it with me if you want. Him, Richard, Richard, Richard. Richard.